So I'll be talking about simplifying uh, forms in Vue today. Forms aren't always complex, but sometimes they are. So sometimes it's helpful to have some abstraction patterns to work with that. So why simplicity? Well, simplicity is desirable for a number of reasons, including readability, maintainability, rapid product iteration, low risk of regressions in prod, and uh, minimal development and maintenance cost of code. Having less code, having simpler code, tends to help with all those things, as long as it's readable. So to just to make explaining this a little bit easier, I'll be talking through an example use case. So I'll be talking about like a, a hosted event management platform. Uh, you can imagine. This is not the original use case where these patterns came about, um, but I think it's, it's helpful in this case for explaining. Uh, so the idea here is that users can create and edit events with the same form. Um, we could have made different forms for that, but I'll talk about that in a minute. And uh, the idea is we have many different types of events that have overlapping attributes, that have some similarities. So like, say, a conference, a fundraiser, a conference, you know, a concert, a party, whatever. So the challenges here in building this form are going to be that most event types share many form options. So you know, maybe they, have, they all have a name. Um, they all have you know, some scheduled range of dates or whatever. But then maybe there are many minor variations between the different event types. And uh, these details don't matter for, for some of the patterns that I'm showing, but they are relevant for others. So basically, in a nutshell, the patterns I'll be presenting here are um, I mean, I'm sure some of you are doing these already anyway, but uh, to, to combine creating and editing something in the same form component rather than having a separate create and edit form, um, populating the form with uh, the form's data attribute with object.assign, and uh, using a config object to sort of determine the logic, some of the logic in the form, and then also to use uh, JSON test fixtures, which I'm sure many of you are doing anyway. But it's good to uh, talk about that. So, so anyway, the first pattern, pretty simple. You know, you, you can edit or create the event in the same form. Really, the only difference is if you have an event ID prop, uh, your, and that prop is defined as a string, as a, as a valid value, then you're, you're editing the form. There's probably going to be a get request to load that form from the endpoint you see there. And then when the user saves the form, again, with, with however they've modified the event, it's saved via put. And then, uh, conversely, uh, if the event ID prop is null, the user is creating a new event, which makes sense, right? Because at that point, it's not saved in the database, so we probably have no event ID associated with, with the event that they're saving. So, and that would be posted then, to probably, to some endpoint. I mean, you can do it however you want, but. Uh, so, in this, in this example, you can kind of see, like, in this, you know, we'd have an event ID uh, with a default of null. And of course, this could extend to whatever you're doing, whether it's, you know, burgers or like uh, cheese, you know, whatever. Some, some, some example that could be something besides events. So uh, next, uh, we'll be talking about populating the data with object.assign. So the benefit here is that it can be really simple and, and reliable and robust. And you basically just have one line of code to populate your data once it's loaded from the server. Uh, and there's, you know, you don't need to be parsing logic necessarily to, to break anything out or whatever. Um, if you structure your form in the right way. So you can see an example of that here. Um, this actually includes, you know, you could theoretically have a data loader component or something. Uh, one of the devs at Bloomberg had a, had a similar idea. Um, that's another pattern you could have that I'm not talking about in here, but, you know, uh, that could be loading your data. And uh, it's, uh, you can see down here in the, in the event loaded method, which is our success callback once we've fetched data from the server. Uh, we're assigning that event data to the this.data uh, part of the component, and then it basically is automatically populated within the, uh, within the form. You, you know, you can see it's, you know, we've got our event.form fields here. We may be reading from an event.config, which I'll get into in a second, and that's populating our form automatically after the assign happens. Um, importantly, though, you have to have an event uh, field in your data when the component is instantiated. I'll get into that in a second. So another pattern you can have is uh, a form conflict object. So this is the pattern that I was talking about that isn't really relevant in every use case, but it is in this case where we have a bunch of events, and uh, they're all similar in some ways, but maybe different in some ways. 
This might not be relevant in a use case where you, you basically just have exactly the same data structure for every instance that you're saving. But in this case, like if we have a bunch of different events, it can be helpful. So the nice thing is you can, you can avoid having a bunch of like if else logic or you know, switch case code. Um, and it also enables you to, I mean, you can also optionally use it for just enabling or disabling form features. And so to give you an example, um, we might for, uh, we might have an object that looks like this. So like every event maybe has these same form fields here. Like say we have an address object, we have like a description and a name, whatever else you might want in there. And then those are, those are added as the, uh, the config objects form fields, which are then used any time you create, say create an event. And then you could have some different event types in here, like we have say a concert or a conference or whatever, and you can see we've got these, you know, like show booking agent selector true, show entertainment options false, whatever, like these, these options that will maybe determine what shows up in our form and what data the user can then save uh, in association with that event. And you could also have a default, say if there's some overlapping catch-all kind that doesn't, uh, you know, that, that applies in most cases. So this is again what I was talking about earlier. So we, we want to have, in order for this to be reactive, we want to have this event field defined. And uh, so you can see this, this is important, this default event data method, this, this pattern here. So the idea is that if the event ID is, is falsy, uh, or sorry, if it's present, then we're loading all that data from the server. And so we can just have this be null, and then when the data is all loaded, it can just be assigned with object.assign. Um, or we could also get it from the config, you know, like when we're creating an event, basically, I mean, you don't have to do it this way, but this is, this is one way to do it. Um, you can have the config object basically loaded based on the event type, and then maybe there's a catch-all default, you don't have to have that. Um, and then your form fields can then also come from that same, from that same form. And the, the JSON parse, JSON stringify probably looks a little wonky in here, but the reason for that is that if you have this, the data, you know, the config object that I defined in the previous slide, and you're, the user's then essentially writing to that if the form fields are in that object, like every time they change something in the form, it'll be written to that object under form fields. And that's a problem if the config object is only instantiated once, which it is if it's you know, pre-compiled and it's in some separate file, it'll just be defined once, and then forever thereafter, the user will write to it and it'll be mutated. So what we're doing here is we're basically just creating a deep copy of the form fields portion of that object just to ensure that the user gets a fresh form fields object every time and they're not mutating this, this uh, globally defined object that Webpack defined when it loaded that file. So, oop, uh, so yeah, anyway, I mean, you, you could, the config again is optional, um, but uh, it's, it's useful, this, this pattern is useful if you have a lot of, a lot of form logic, you don't want to simplify. So uh, that's, oh, I had an example of that in there. Hmm. That seems to be gone now. Hmm. All right, well, I guess we can go back to the, this slide and you can see you've got the, you know, the event.config, show the sponsor selector if, like, event.config, show sponsor selector, whatever. Um, so anyway, last pattern that you've, many of you have probably seen before, having test fixtures, JSON text fixtures. And this is good for just having always, you know, loading your form with the same data and then expecting that when it saves, it sends exactly that same data. So if someone changes the form, some other developer changes the form, some group of developers change the form like a few years later, whatever, it'll always save the correct data, which is really helpful when you have like a, a giant object that populates the form and there are many, many fields that can potentially populate it. Um, so as an example, you could have, say, each, you know, each different event type, a concert, a conference, a fundraiser, whatever, and for each of those, you have some associated load data in a fixture and some save data. And then, you know, somewhere in the test, you're, you're going to be loading the form with the load data. And then importantly, when you invoke the save method, you're going to expect that it's saved with the correct save data. So anyway, to summarize what you just saw, uh, basically these, these four patterns here, creating and editing with the same component, using object.assign to populate the data, potentially using a form config object to, to help simplify uh, a complex form that can handle many different types of the same data, uh, and then using JSON fixtures to test, load, and save functionality. And that's, uh, that's it. Thank you all for listening.